Necro Industry. Early in the Empire's history, it was left to the Lich Lords to derive occult methods from Turek's example, making use of the animated dead drawn from the withered mortal communities scattered about the islands. Before long, they managed to create a great horde of thrall slaves and a smaller number of more cunning lieutenants. These simple undead built the great city of Skell and the Black Palace where Turek chooses to dwell and receive his worship. In short order, the Lich Lords extended their awareness to the mainland. Planting agents among humanity, they watched as the thousand cities feuded amongst each other, noting every innovation in the arts of murder and warfare. Rather than reverse engineer the inventions of mortal genius, Crixian agents pillaged the graves of humanity's greatest thinkers and stripped these secrets from their very bones through forensic necromancy. These necromancers excelled at uncovering lore and applying the research to their own nightmarish creations. The arrival of the Orgoth on their terrible black ships, among the very few mortal affairs ever to capture Turek's direct interest, forestalled the, for the long-planned Crixian invasion of Western Imran. The Orgoth possessed a unique necromatic tradition as well as a vast wealth of powerful relics and unfamiliar lore, and they went about subduing the mainland population with inhuman savagery. Although Turek himself laid waste to their fleets when they foolishly approached Crix's main island, the Dragon Father allowed them to claim the island of Galgast, where his agents could easily observe them. The Orgoth crushed the people of Western Imran beneath their tyranny for the next several centuries, but eventually the oppressed rose against them. A turning point came when the goddess Thamar granted humanity the gift of magic. Soon the Amaris merged their newfound arcane skills with technology to create the first mechanical devices. The Crixians were immediately fascinated by these machines and envisioned necronomic equivalents. They plundered the bones of countless arcanists and set about incorporating mechanical knowledge into their own morbid industries, crafting a new and unique necrotechnological tradition. They readily mastered techniques to augment their thralls with crude steam engines, and thus a new era was born. The Crix took note of every weapon the Emerys and the Orgoth employed in their struggles for dominance. When the Iron Alliance constructed the first Colossals during the Rebellion, Crix wasted no time in stealing the secrets of Cerebral Matrixes, the massive, the, ma the massive arcane devices that serve as the cortex for these titanic constructs. The Incursion Armies Over the last 20 years, Crixian incursion forces have successfully penetrated the mainland and established secret bases in a number of remote wilderness locations, most significantly Signar's Wormwall Mountains and Cador's Thornwood Forest though operations in the latter have ceased in recent years. Underground tunnels, whether naturally occurring or painstakingly excavated, are the favored sites. With these bases, Crix has begun to establish the infrastructure for unlimited necromechanical fabrication, an essential part in their insidious campaigns. Crix has located most of these facilities near places of slaughter where a necrotite can be mined to fuel their war industry. Hidden mining rigs often accompany the necrofactorums. Most materials for crafting thralls are stolen from forgotten graves and fresh battlefields. Crixians use the ancient dead to produce banes or scarlocks, while fresher corpses are reanimated as bile thralls or mechanothralls. Few major engagements in between the Iron Kingdoms goes unnoticed by Crixian agents. They descend upon battlefields like carrion birds, stripping the carnage of corpses, mechanica, and any other potentially useful salvage. Their spy network includes contracts in governments of all the major nations of, of, the, of Western Imran. Many informants do not truly grasp the implications of their doings, willfully ignorant of their patron's aims, and focused only on the wealth they can earn by furnishing seemingly trivial information to them. In the aggregate, this data allows Crix to follow troop movements and subtly push for battles to occur in places convenient for them. 
Other undead minions scour the continent for lost artifacts and lore, or Turek's hated spawn. In some cases, these subordinates remain unsupervised for years, to be collected later when they uncover some obscure object or useful intelligence. All of these assets work to extend Crix's hold on the mainland. Several necrofactorums within the worm wall now comprise the production center for mainland war efforts, with minor operations scattered in isolated places such as Velshnik Headlands and the Valkyne Bluffs of Kador. Previously, the largest portion of the Crixian industry on the mainland was situated beneath the Thornwood, but the unlikely alliance between the nations of Kador and Signar forced the Crix to relocate most of these facilities elsewhere. The recovery of resources lost at the Thornwood facility was swift by Crixian standards, and remaining necrofactorums continued to bolster the Nightmare Empire's strength. While Asphyxius controls the, this network of facilities, Mastro Necrotech Mortenbra oversees certain operational details. Her flawless machine logic has already exponentially increased production in these necrofactorums, which are equal parts factory and surgical theater. Vast numbers of specially crafted thralls and necrotechs endlessly assemble new thralls and helljacks as the roar of wholesome, unwholesome machineries eclipses the screams of living victims. Mortals are dragged into this abyss for a vivisection spent their last moments breathing a nauseating miasma of smoke, poison, and vaporized blood all while lit by green flames of necrotype powered forges. In, shock, in the shockingly last few years, Crix has insinuated a horrible new tendril into their empire into the heart of the western Emeron. While the mortal nations squabble over their borders, Crix quietly spreads like a cancer beneath the surface. Crixian Fleets the fleets of the Crixian navy have served as the face of the Nightmare Empire since its foundation, with an extensive but disparate armada arising from several distinct Scarred Island pirate forces, Crix controls one of the more premier naval powers in Western Emeron. For centuries, Lichlord Terminus has had oversight of the Crixian fleets. Since taking charge of an incursion army, however, he has entrusted operational command to Scar Ravenmane. Recognizing her leadership, her skills as a warcaster, and her unwavering loyalty to the Dragon Father. She unleashed the full fury of Crix's naval power upon the western seaboard, battering its ports with a punishing frequency not seen since the scarred invasions during Ventor Rauthorn's rule. These attacks have ranged north to Kador's farthest frozen ports and intruded across the heavily patrolled Gulf of Signar down to the shores of the Protectorate of Menoth. The fleets include vessels capable of penetrating the major river arteries of Imarin in support of the incursion armies. The dark iron heart of the Crixian navy is the dreaded Black Fleet. The mere sight of one of the black ships is regarded as a sign of imminent and certain doom. The Crixians bring their own weather with eerie winds to fill their sails and chilling fogs to conceal their approach. Derived from closely guarded secrets ripped from the Orgoth, these ships easily rival the most powerful vessels of the mortal navies. Only modern iron hulls can stand up against them one on one. Black ships are constructed in Dreg's mouth under the supervision of Master Shipwright Cress Skorat, who answers to Lord Captain Deverin Vrice, Master of Dregsmouth, and former vassal to Lich Lord Morbus. The Lord Captain pre presently serves Lich Lord Terminus, who laid the foundations for the original fleet. Scar leads this fleet directly alongside the notable captains of the other flagships that form her immediate escort. Sick taxes make up a large portion of the black ships, crews, officers, and captains, more than they do in the other fleets. In addition to being among the most formidable warships ever created, black ships have the capacity to carry large numbers of soldiers, helljacks, and other supplies to support the mainland invasion forces. The black fleet has rarely been released in full force, and mainland admirals often underestimate its size. 
They view Crix's nautical strength through the skewed lens of encounters with the chaotic and less formidable mortal pirate fleet. The Ghost Fleet, the smallest of the Crixian fleets, is not quite as fast or as deadly as the black ships, but its frigates and larger ships have been had their own advantages. They are pushed by phantom winds, regenerate from damage sustained with unnatural acclarity, and are crewed by seemingly indestructible spirits rather than living men. All but the most powerful mortal fleet, fleets retreat at the mere sight of one of these ghostly vessels looming ahead, green flames flickering along their decks, rigging, and crew. The ghost fleet's crew fear and respect Captain Rengrave, who changed many of them into revenants and built up the spe spectral flotilla. Rengrave has the distinction of being Turk's first vassal and Crix's first citizen and his flagship, the Atromenius, is the most ancient ship sailing the Meridius, an enormous blackened galleon that was once a Tadoran dragon mast funeral vessel. To be boarded by her revenants is to face eternal torment, and many sailors choose to end their lives rather than endure that terrible fate. Though Rengrave is the first and most formidable entity in the fleet, each ship obeys its own captain, and coordinated efforts between them are infrequent. Crix's mortal pirate fleet is the largest but least ordered of its armadas, a diverse group mostly made up of sailing vessels liberated from other nations. Indeed, this fleet operates more as a loose collective of flotillas rather than a single cohesive group. These vessels include the largest number of living crewmen, primarily human scarred islanders, but they also employ Trolkin, Orgrun, and Sataxes. The largest population of Sataxes is con concentrated on the elite vessels called Araxia Raiders, led by Araxia Wraithblade, who has been delegated oversight of the entire pirate fleet. Araxia has the direct ear of Scar Ravenmane, and the other commanders obey her accordingly, if not always swiftly or predictably. In addition to mounting chaotic attacks on the mainland shipping for plunder, the pirate fleets have long been involved in the smuggling trade, the only true commerce between Crix and the mainland. Their ability to find even marginally welcome at smugglers' port and seedy pirate dens has made them a valued asset for Crixian intelligence. Though used primarily for support and diversion, this fleet stands ready to answer the call to action at any time. Because of its numerous vessels are crewed by willful, bloodthirsty scoundrels of volatile temperament, the pirate fleet has historically proven difficult to control and coordinate. Recent efforts by Atraxia on the Scar's orders have helped to bring these captains more in line and ensure their obedience. The Taxi's blood witches have learned that they may do as they please until Scar is or Scar that calls upon them. Crix otherwise employs these ships to distract naval forces while the Black Fleet or the Ghost Fleet engages higher priority targets. Though the various Crixian fleets are made up of desperate and sometimes mutually hostile crews, they come together for raids against key targets. The terrifying entities that crew these vessels are accompanied by amph amphibious helljacks such as the Leviathan and the Howarder. Dropping into the water before the ships land, these fearsome machines rise from the depths to terrorize coastal defenders. Raiding tactics usually involve routing panicked enemies through sheer press of numbers.